Hey, good morning. You are back with the crew. Thanks for being back. I am thrilled to have you guys back with me and we have a fun show this morning like we always do. <laughs> Sometimes um, Elizabeth says, Wait, why do you always say I, I have a great show for you today? It's like, well, what am I supposed to say? It's going to be terrible. What are we, what are we doing here? I have to tell this story because it's so cool and it happened because of a listener and it happened in my life and it was last week and I told everybody that I'd get to this story and it's so much fun that I have to tell it. I'm last week before coming to Vegas, I was having some troubles with my solar system and it's been a, those of you who don't know, I have a big solar system. I'm pretty much off grid. I mean, unless it's terrible weather for a week or something, I'm, I'm totally off grid. Um, I started getting air codes and more than just one, you know what I mean? And, and then it was, I look in the manual and I couldn't figure out what the air code meant. And I, I kind of associated what, what it was and this and that. And I was kind of getting frustrated with it because everything I was trying to do wasn't really remedying the problem. <laughs> so you know how that is. I didn't sleep well. I'm, I'm sort of, because I'm leaving the farm to my brother's very capable hands, but he's not a solar guy and he doesn't really want to mess with it. So I'm thinking, ah, you know, man. I'm... So I wake up that morning, uh, the next, very next morning, and I'm grabbing a cup of coffee and I'm sitting down to my computer and I'm going to turn on, turn on and I'm thinking to myself, I should really look into these air codes, but I didn't. You know what I did instead? I checked my emails where you guys contact me. I know I should have taken care of business and went straight to the air code in the manual, but I didn't. I went to you guys. And you know what I found there? I found Mr. Sammy. Sammy, brother, I love you. I'm not going to give your last name out. I don't know if you want me to or not. But Sam and I have become uh, pretty good friends and uh, just through the phone uh, but we are kindred spirits for sure and we are soul brothers as i am with many people that we have connected even closer than maybe just a youtube video but i feel that way in the comments about all of you i just want you all to know that so Sam sends me this email that basically says, hey, I was looking at your farm video, and uh, by the way, I see you have solar panel, uh, solar array there, and if there's anything I can ever do for you or help you with, I've been a solar tech for 20 years, and, and I have a background in solar. It's my passion. I really love solar. I think it can help mankind. I mean, it was a wonderfully written, I'm, not, I'm just paraphrasing what it said, an incredible email. And this is what I wake up to the morning that I have to deal with my problems before I go to Vegas. That's the world we live in. That's the community we have. We have everything you need. All of us. We have each other. We don't need government. We don't need politics. We don't need banking. You guys know all that. And I'm going to spend, I hope, the rest of my life convincing you all that you and I are the commerce of this planet. You and I work for each other. We don't work for a system. The system doesn't work for us. And it hasn't for a very, very long time. Now, I'm going to re cover some of the remarks in the last video, please, people, it had nothing to do with politics. And I hope more of you could read through the lines on that. It's like, man, I thought that was pretty clear on that. I'm not into politics. I don't really care about politicians. I really think they're a minus factor. They're not zeros. They're a minus factor. Okay. I think it was, uh, gosh, who, who was the great Anyway, I love his quote, which was uh, basically, they were trying to throw him in prison for not voting. And, um, and basically, they kept asking him, well, why don't you vote? You know, it's un-American not to vote. And uh, basic Mark Twain said, I just don't want to encourage them. That's how I feel about it. 
And when somebody asked me one time, well, you know what, Alan, if you don't vote, you can't complain about government. I've heard that my whole life. I haven't voted since the 80s, by the way. Wrong. I, I believe it's completely the uh, wrong for me, for my mindset. That's the exact opposite of that. If you vote, you agree with the system in which you're voting in. You're supporting the system in which you believe could possibly make change. Therefore, you're supporting that system. You have no right to complain because you played the game. You are playing the game. I have a right to complain in the same manner that I don't buy drugs on the streets. So I can complain about people who do. Person who buys drugs on the street can't complain about drugs on the street. A person wearing a seal fur coat cannot complain about somebody who bashes seals. I hope you understand that analogy. Fewer and fewer people in the world vote. And the reason is, is because they do less and less for us. And in my opinion, that is a vote. Anyway, not trying to make this video political whatsoever. I really wanted to make this video about AI because boy, the buzz at the show was all about AI and many other brilliant things. I've had my own take on this for a while. I've been trying to mull it over my head, so I'm going to try and keep this concise and make this video not too long because it's a massive subject. I'm going to talk about it for the next year, maybe five, I'm sure. But my philosophy about AI in a nutshell, if I can put one in, is people fear it because they're told to fear it. People were told to fear 5G when 5G can't even shoot through tree leaves. I'm, I'm not saying that 5G is good for you. I'm not saying that. What I am trying to say is that people will tell you something new is always fearful. You should always fear something new. It's a great analogy, and I hope that you understand it. It's not perfect. No analogies are. However, in, I believe it was early 1900s, whatever, they started putting electricity in people's homes. When they did, many people who installed the electricity were shocked and maimed or killed in many circumstances, okay? People became very afraid and people for almost a whole generation would not allow electricity in their house because it killed people. It's not a perfect analogy, but you get the point. Technology comes along in your lifetime, and if something, one bad thing happens to one bad person or one group of people, everybody in the world fears it. And I understand AI is different, and I understand AI could go to a, a level that is just craziness. I'm here to tell you why that's not going to happen. One of the things that I love to talk about is when you start to understand blockchain, and when you understand AI and technology, and when you start to understand what Web3 and decentralization means, all of those four categories are so immense that I can't just brush over the top and tell you how I really feel about all of it. And anytime I tell you that I believe something or feel something or understand something, believe me, I could change my mind or alter it daily because I'm not stuck in my ways. That's what allows me to, to progress and to grow as a spiritual human being on the face of this planet. Judging people for who they were yesterday is part of our biggest problem in our society today. Okay, How are you going to teach or grow as a community or a civilization if you're still pigeonholing somebody for something they said a week ago? Right? Okay, so growth is really important. I'm going to try and give you my real philosophy about why I think AI ultimately is going to be beautiful for mankind. First of all, 
Technology is deflationary. All of it. It gets more and more efficient, making more time for you and your kids, making everything more valuable to you and I. If we can keep the top from profiting from it and charging us for it, okay, such as phone service use and all the rest of that, the way they've monopolized all of these things, all the technology is monopolized. All you have to do is look around the internet, how many people own it, look at the mobile phone networks, how many people own it. There's only three or four in each group, right? That tells you the monopolization is the problem, not the technology. Now, with this technology, let's look at it. Computing, I'm boiling it down just to, you know, basics here. here. Try and follow with me. It's ones and zeros, okay? So, it's it boil all the way down. All of it, data is ones and zeros. Everything wants to run at its most efficient level. If efficiency is what it's going to do, in particular, chat GBT, that all you have to do is look at that and say, that's making things more and more and more efficient. Now, is there a negative side to efficiency? Yes, of course. If you're a clerk or somebody who runs a cash register in a building or in a business, you're probably going to be outsourced. There's no question about that. Does that mean that we should chop down every tree tomorrow because all the lumberjacks, you know, we're going to lose their jobs? No, doesn't mean that. It, it, like you, that's not how we progress. We decide how much of how much business is going to be personal, interactional between your cashier. Those businesses will thrive or not because you and I won't patronize those places. We, we won't go to those places that have only computers or AIs for a long period of time. You will want the personal interaction such as this video. Now, what is technology really good at? Becoming more and more efficient. Efficiency means what? Less waste. Less bureaucracy. What is GBT going to PT going to say when we point the thing towards the fat at the top. We're, we're going to point that thing directly at, okay, well, how do we streamline the budget of the United States? Any country for that matter. How do we streamline government? How do we, they've never looked themselves in the mirror ever once. And now you and I can type it up on our computer, and it's going to go ahead and kick us all out the information. Well, the biggest problem with your economy today is your government spending waste. Your overprinting of money. Your overbanking of people. Your rules and regulations. Your committees and groups that have more red tape holding commerce and business from thriving. Understand that's what's happening now. You people already understand that because you've already invested in the blockchain. What does the blockchain do for AI? The blockchain keeps AI honest. Stop and think about how are you going to buy a product through AI that isn't on a blockchain? How are you going to know it's the real product? How are you going to know that whatever the camera is saying is really Alan or a computer-generated Alan? Excuse me. How are you going to know that? The only way you're going to know whether somebody faked a video about me through AI or it's really me doing it is AI. Blockchain. AI. Web3. Web3 all in one package is going to say, check, yes, that's Alan. Alan has a code, Alan has whatever, I have, the, I have the smart contract on my side. I'm able to say, yes, this is him. It can't be duplicated because it's on my chain. I know I went 
a lot of different places right there. But I need you to understand that the only problem, the biggest problem, not the only problem, keeping you and I in the poorhouse is the inefficiency at the top. The other countries around the world are starting to figure that out. There's nothing more e inefficient, okay, than the printing of the U.S. dollar. They're getting goods and services and spending oil and buying oil and buying gold and buying things and buying steel from other countries who work very hard for it for some digit that they created out of nothing. That doesn't work on the blockchain. That doesn't make sense to AI. That is going to set every bell and whistle off on the AI going, there's your problem. Those people are the problem. Not you guys. You guys are doing your part. I hope this, this is just the beginning of what I'm going to do on a series of AI. I just want to make it for the common man so that you and I can understand it and so that you and I can fear it less and start to understand, hey, it's just like a fork. Did the fork make me fat? No. Is it a tool? Yes. Is it used to hurt somebody? Could be. Could be. But to blame technology or fear it and live in fear is giving of yourself what? Fear to whoever you want to put in power. People who are pushing the fear upon you are pushing fear, subjecting you to fear, to control you emotionally, then you've lost who you are as a being. You've lost your ability to think clearly. You've lost your ability to sense what's coming because you're in a sense of fear. You don't think clearly or objectively, and you cannot thrive in a difficult, challenging circumstance or world living in fear. As a boat captain, when it's all hitting the fan and the boat is coming apart, you cannot live in fear. You must know you're going to survive. You have to understand that technology and the beauty of survival doesn't come from fear. It comes from hope. It comes from knowledge. It comes from strength. It comes from experience. It comes from wisdom. And I want you to be wise about AI. I love you guys. I am out. Well, I went all the way to Vegas. Looked everywhere for the man. Yeah. I thought I'd run into all this. I, every corner I turned. I was looking. No. I, I just, I don't, I don't think he's there. I think maybe he's out of town. Love me some Elvis. Where were you, brother? I just think he took the week off. I think he's there. We'll catch him next time.